This is the Yeti multifunctional pressure cooker and we're going to start with how to plug it in. You can see that the plugs are shaped differently. So when going to put it in the outlet, if it doesn't fit, just rotate it and it will slide right in. Then you'll see four horizontal lines appear on the display screen. This is the condensation collector and it goes in the back and you put it right here and that's it. Now we're going to make some simple meatballs using the preset function key meat stew and you could use ground pork, ground beef, but we're going to use ground turkey for this example. So we're ready to add the sauce and the meatballs and put them in the inner pot. But first we need to unlock the top. To do that, you just turn it to the right, make sure the arrow is aligned with the arrow below it, and you'll see the unlock icon flashing and beeping. Just take the lid off. This is your inner pot where you want to put all your ingredients. So we're going to pour all the sauce in first. Next, we're going to just add our meatballs. Now that all our ingredients are in the inner pot and we're ready to cook, we're going to put the top back on. Just turn the top to the left. Make sure the lock arrow is aligned with the arrow below it. And now we have to select a function key. And to cook these meatballs, we're going to just click the preset function key meat stew. Once we hit it, we have 10 seconds to either select delay or change the pressure level. And if we don't push anything, it will start automatically as it just did. You can see it's now in the preheating state and that's when the lights rotate around in a circle. And what's happening now is your pressure cooker is calculating how much time it should cook for. And it does that based on the amount of weight inside the inner pot and the temperature of the food in the inner pot. Now also because we selected meat stew, which uses pressure to cook, we need to make sure that the pressure valve number one is down to begin with. And also we want to make sure the handle here is in the ceiling position, not the venting position, the ceiling position. So it's sealed, the valve is starting down, it's kind of sunken in, and now we just wait. It's been about five minutes now and you can see we're still in the preheating state and it's perfectly normal to hear a clicking noise or a hissing noise and even see a little steam being released from above. All that means is that the pressure cooker is trying to reach the appropriate pressure level and temperature. You can see now that the pressure valve has raised and is no longer in the down position as it was before the preheating state began. The preheating state is over and the cook time has been set to 35 minutes. So now all you have to do is wait and when 35 minutes has passed, your food is ready to serve. So it just finished cooking, you could hear it beeping and now it's entered into the keep warm state. The next step is to release the pressure using the handle. There's two ways to do this. You can either move the handle to venting and that's called quick release and all the steam will come out and the pressure will release. Or you can leave the handle in its position and wait about 10 to 15 minutes and the pressure and steam will naturally escape. But we're gonna do the quick release. Now the key is to keep your hand to the side and make sure your face and hand doesn't go over here because again a lot of heat and steam is going to come out. Watch. So stay away when you do the key quick release. Now we're going to wait and eventually that pressure valve will sink back in. So let's keep our eyes on it. You see, it just dropped. That means the pressure has been released and it's safe to open the top. Now again, you can hit cancel and the keep warm state will end or you can just take the lid, the lid off 
right now. And to do that, you unlock it, pull the lid up. Let's put it somewhere safe. Because remember, the lid is hot. And now here's your food. It's ready to be served. So since we're gonna eat it now, we'll hit cancel. You can see the keep warm state is off and you have the option to either remove the inner pot, do not touch it with your hands, it's very hot. Use oven mitts or oven gloves to remove the inner pot and then you can serve the food over pasta, you can put it on a roll, how, however you want. Or you can take a spoon, the spoon your um, Yeti pressure cooker came with and remove the food and put it into a bowl, put it onto a serving plate, whatever you'd like. But the food's ready to go We're going to cook some salmon and we're going to do this by using the preset function key fish and I'll also show you how to use the delay key with it. We're going to take our rack and put it in the middle of the inner pot. Then we're going to take our fish which we have already seasoned to our liking. We're going to place it right on top there. Then we're going to fill up a cup of water. Take the cup of water and pour it in the inner pot. Make sure not to pour it on top of your fish. Now we're going to put the lid on. We'll lock the lid. We're going to select the preset function key fish. And we're also going to select the function key delay. So we hit delay and now it's asking us, do we want to delay cooking for two hours? We can change it to three, four, five. We can lower it. I mean, we'll set it for delay cooking for 10 minutes and then we're gonna push start. Now your pressure cooker is going to count down from 10 to zero. And once it reaches zero, it will then enter into the preheating state. So it's been 10 minutes and as you can see, pressure cooker has now entered into the preheating state and again just like when you were cooking the meatballs you want to make sure your handle here is in the sealed position not the venting position the sealed position the preheating state is over and you can see it's now cooking and the cook time is at four it actually set to seven so three minutes have passed already and it's on low pressure that's usually how fish cooks on low pressure. And we have four minutes to go. It's done cooking, you could hear it beeping, and now it's entered into the keep warm state. And just like when we cooked our meatballs, we can see that our pressure valve is still up and we need to either move the handle into venting to release the pressure and steam and the valve will drop. Or we can just wait 10 to 15 minutes and the pressure and steam will escape naturally and then the valve will drop. And that's what we're gonna do this time. We're just gonna wait 10 to 15 minutes. And while we wait, we will leave the pressure cooker in the keep warm state so the food is hot when we're ready to eat it. We've been in the keep warm state for eight minutes now and the pressure valve just dropped. You see how it sank back in? We still want to move the handle into the venting position before we open it. Now we will unlock the lid. Slowly lift it. Put it somewhere safe. Again, the lid is very hot. And our fish is ready to serve. I just used the spoon to scoop the fish off the rack and remove it and put it on the plate. And then I'm just gonna squeeze some lemon on it. I'm gonna cook butternut squash using the manual function key. So I already put the rack inside the inner pot and I cut the butternut squash in half 
just so it would fit better inside. Next, I'll take a cup of water and pour it in. Now let's put the top on. Let's lock it. And since we're gonna be using the manual function key, which cooks with pressure, we wanna make sure that the handle is in the ceiling position. And also check that the valve is down to begin with. Now we'll hit manual. We'll set it for 10 minutes to begin. And let's push start. Now it's in the preheating state and let's wait. The preheating state is over and now the cook time has been set for 10 minutes. We're halfway there, we have five more minutes to go. So the cooking time is over and we're gonna release the pressure and steam using the quick release method. So we're just waiting for the valve to drop, which it just did. You see it's back in there now. It's in the down position. And we're gonna push cancel to turn off to keep warm function. And we will slowly unlock it. And then lift the top. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let the butternut squash cool off for about five minutes. Then we're gonna cut it in half and remove the seeds and then place it back inside the inner pot and manually pressure cook it again for an additional 10 minutes. We took the seeds out and we put the butternut squash back on the rack inside the inner pot. Now we're gonna seal the top again and we're gonna set the manual cooking time for 10 minutes once more. And that's it. When it finishes this time, we're gonna take the butternut squash out, mash it up, add a little syrup, brown sugar, whatever we like, and then eat it. And remember to put the handle back into sealing position. Now we're out of the preheating state again, and we're back to 10 minutes of cooking time for the second round of 10 minutes of cooking time. The second 10 minute cooking time period has finished. We're gonna hit cancel. We're gonna do another quick release. Wait for the valve to drop. Just dropped. Got a little smoky there. Now we will unlock the lid. Open the lid. I scooped out the center of the butternut squash, put it into the bowl. Now I'm gonna add a little honey. And then just mash it up with the spoon here. And once I'm done mashing it up, it's ready to eat. Now I'm gonna make Korean style beef using the preset function key, sear and saute, and we're also gonna use the manual key as well. So the first thing to do is hit the sear and saute preset function key, then we'll push start. And this preset function key will always set to 30 minutes of cook time, and that's a safety feature to make sure it's not on for longer than 30 minutes. And the top should always be off when you use sear and saute. So remember that, always make sure the top is off when using that preset function key. Now you wanna wait for the cooking time to reach 25 minutes. Once it's at 25 minutes, it's reached the appropriate temperature 
to properly brown or sear your food or saute it. So we have four more minutes to go. While we're waiting for the display screen to get to 25 minutes, we'll season our meat. Okay, now it's at 25 minutes of cook time. It's heated up for the past five minutes. So let's add in two tablespoons of olive oil to the inner pot. It's one. And here's the second tablespoon of olive oil. Now we'll start to brown the edges of our beef. Let's put it in the inner pot. You know, do a few at a time. And you want to use something long because it's hot inside here and sometimes the oil can splatter. So you don't want to have your hand inside the inner pot while you rotate to meat to make sure all the sides get browned. Okay, these are our last two pieces. And also you don't want to put your face over the inner pot while searing or sauteing because again the oil can kind of jump up a little bit and it's very hot. So here's all our meat. You can see it's now brown on all the edges. And now we have to deglaze the inner pot. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. To deglaze the inner pot, you wanna first hit cancel. So let's shut off the sear and saute preset function key. It's now off. And we're gonna pour in some beef consomme. Next, we're gonna pour in about a quarter of a cup of soy sauce. And now we're gonna add in our meat that we just browned. Next, we'll put the lid on, lock the lid. We're gonna select the manual function key and we're gonna set it for 45 minutes. And then we're gonna change the pressure level. You can see now it's on high. We're gonna set the pressure level to mid for this recipe. We're gonna push start. And now it's in the preheating state. Now we're in the preheating state and we wanna make sure that our handle is in the sealing position, which it is, and our pressure valve is down, but it will raise once the appropriate temperature and pressure level is reached within the inner pot. We're still in the preheating state, and I know I set the cook time for 45 minutes, so I have some time here to kill, so I'm gonna to go to the gym and I'll probably be back in about 90 minutes to two hours. And what's gonna happen is, once the preheating state is done, it will automatically go into the cook time I entered, which was 45 minutes. And then after 45 minutes, your pressure cooker automatically enters into the keep warm setting. So when I get back, it will be in the keep warm setting, the food will be done, and it'll be ready to eat. See you when I get back. I just got back from the gym, but I got stuck in a little traffic on the way back, so it took a little longer than I expected, but we can see that our display screen says that it's been in the keep warm state for about one hour and five minutes now, so after it was done cooking, it automatically went into the keep warm state. Now also, we can see that the valve has dropped, which means the pressure and steam released naturally, because you can see the handle is still in the ceiling position. So. The food's ready to eat. It's been ready to eat for the past hour and six minutes. So now all we have to do is push cancel and we'll still move the handle to the venting position. Nothing came out because it was already naturally released. Then just unlock the lid, take it off nice and slow. And our Korean beef is in there ready to eat. Gonna just scoop it out with the soup spoon You can see the meat is all cooked.